almighty and merciful God, eternal shepherd of your people, listen to our prayers and grant that your servant heart to our vision. To whom you entrust with the care of this church, grant you the joy of his eternal master, and there to receive the rich reward of his labor. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation waits with eager expectation for the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it. And hope that creation itself will be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has been raised. The Gospel of the Lord. particularly gratifying to have such a wonderful turnout for this moment of intense prayer and memory and offering of ourselves our condolences to the family and for us to gather in a very real sense as a diocese I'm particularly grateful this morning for the presence of Bishop Doran, the successor to Bishop O'Neill. To Bishop Doherty, our diocesan son from Lafayette, Bishop Siegel, and Bishop Imish from Joliet, Bishop Rassus from Chicago, Bishop Kropraki from Springfield, Abbot Vincent and Abbot David, who are here as well. It's a reminder of the wideness church and the wideness the depth that a life of faith can affect as Bishop O'Neill did throughout his priesthood, throughout his episcopacy. As we know, funerals and funeral masses can take on a different tone depending upon the circumstances that bring them together. But they all have for us one particular uniting purpose, and that is the fulfillment of our Christian and our Catholic duty that we pray for, the final and eternal purification of the one who has died, the final and eternal union with Christ in his love and in his mercy. God has given us the privilege of praying for those who go before us and the knowledge that our prayers are worthy and they are effective. Of course, sometimes that duty can be terribly sad. Perhaps in some of those occasions we can but join our tears to the tears of Christ before the tomb of Lazarus. But on other occasions, perhaps even like this one, our sadness, our sadness more easily gives way to an element of joy. Bishop O'Neill turned 95 last December. And of course, we're reminded in Psalm 90 that our span is 70 years or 80 for those who are strong. Last month, Bishop O'Neill celebrated his 70th anniversary of ordination as a priest. His service as Bishop of Rockford covered nearly 26 years. And after that point, Anna worshiping in the temple. He lived in retirement for nearly 19 years. Certainly the one thing we can say is that Bishop O'Neill didn't achieve. <laughs> Only last week, he appeared, we might say, throughout the diocese in a video shown in our parishes in which he had called, he recalled establishing the diocesan stewardship campaign. And I have to say, in some ways, this was very typical of everything that I and others found in Bishop O'Neill. Over the last year in particular, since I've been here, 
Bishop O'Neill was declining. He knew it, and so did everybody else around him. But notwithstanding his decline, the bishop remained very interested in what was clearly his beloved diocese, always asking questions, trying to follow what was going on. And in my dealings with him over this past year, there was one thing that you never heard, and that was a complaint. He never complained about his health or his pains or perhaps the necessary restrictions of living where in his room. I saw him about a week ago, and he was in his chair when I walked in, kind of half dozed off underneath the blanket. But it was the same reaction each and every time I came in. Oh, Bishop! And out came the hand to shake hands with his rosary. I said, Bishop, how are you doing? And his answer was, not bad for an old guy. <laughs> the sign of a life of contentment, even in his last days. Our gospel this morning recounts the last moment of Christ's earthly pre-resurrection life. Christ, and in the waning days of Bishop O'Neill's life, we can gain a very valuable lesson for ourselves. You see, in a very real sense, they did not fight death. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. And for those of us who saw Bishop O'Neill in the last days, and a bit of the labored breathing that he was dealing under, this response of Christ somehow becomes even more real. Bishop O'Neill followed Christ in that peaceful serenity of his final days. You know, in the past we often prayed for the grace of a peaceful and a happy death. And a moment like this reminds us to pray and to carry out our lives in a way that we too can peacefully surrender to the Father's call. St. Paul reminds us that we did not receive a spirit of slavery that we should fall back into fear. Faith perhaps can't totally remove our human revulsion before death, but it can calm our fear because of the love and the forgiveness of Christ that beckons us. We saw that in Bishop O'Neill, in the way that he lived his final days. In many dioceses, including our own, a number of the schools and the monuments and places of the diocese are adorned with names or images of the former bishops. And that's a help and it's a reminder to us. It helps us to recall our heritage that you and I are not here as a matter of faith, simply in a moment of here and now. We're built upon the faith of those who have gone before us. That faith goes back to the apostles and to Christ, and it continues in a particular way in the successors of every age, in the bishops, in Bishop O'Neill. But those references to past bishops also remind us to pray for them. Not just at this particular Mass, but to continue to offer our prayers for them. Many of us in this generation owe much of our formation and faith to the work of Bishop O'Neill. And we fulfill it in praying for him, not just as a duty, but fulfilling also a debt of gratitude. How many were the hours of prayer for the faithful that were then off, offered by them, Father O'Neill? How many were the confessions 
heard by Monsignor O'Neill? How many parish visits, <coughs> confirmations, <coughs> homilies did Bishop O'Neill prepare for us? Just this morning I received an email <coughs> about an aspect of Bishop O'Neill that I've heard of before. His devotion to the Blessed Mother and to Eucharistic Adoration. And that he would encourage others. And the email was to simply say, I stayed with it after he got me started on that kind of devotion. How many of the brothers who are here from the presbyterate of this diocese had the hands of Bishop O'Neill laid upon them? How many were the acts of kindness and the faithful teaching, perhaps even at times as a good and wise shepherd would do corrective teaching that led us to Christ? How many of us throughout the diocese benefited from the priests and the assignments that Bishop O'Neill sent to us in our parishes and in our faith? Irma, to you, to the family, Sister Helen, to the nieces and nephews and all, please accept our very sincere condolences for the turnout and this wonderful Mass is a real sign of that. But please accept also our gratitude. Arthur O'Neill didn't come from nowhere. Like everything else, he was a product of so many things, including the family. And we are very, very grateful for that. We know now that our shepherd stands before Christ before the Good Shepherd, before the Chief Shepherd. And so we pray for him in gratitude for his work for Christ, his love for the Church, and his love for us. We pray that God may take him to himself and that there he might await our coming for him as well. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. Please respond. Lord, hear our prayer. For Arthur Joseph, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. For our brother, Wait the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. Lord For our brother, Arthur Joseph, who served the church as a priest, that he may be given a place in the liturgy of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Arthur Joseph, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship.
worship and faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our God, our shelter and our strength, we listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Arthur may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, in Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, that in your sight, we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant your peace, guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all who gather here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, Lord. They offer it for themselves and all who are near you, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well being. Lock 
of those you have chosen. Be pleased, Lord, O oh God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these angels be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and the blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing, through Christ our Lord. Amen. sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the
the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we do with those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. But not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant we pray, O Lord, that your servant Arthur, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again, and the love of Christ which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Father of mercies, we commend our brother Arthur in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Arthur in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now before we conclude, we have a tradition in the diocese for a brother priest, Bishop O'Neill not only our chief priest, but by ordination of brother priest. And so I would ask, especially my brothers now, to join in commending him to our Blessed Mother by singing the Salve Regina. Salve Regina.
Now take our brother to his place of rest.